Antonio starts right now. A deadly shooting on the south side this morning. Police still searching for who is responsible. We have the latest details from police. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. It's a situation no homeowner wants to encounter a car plowing into a home. Coming up on GMSA, we'll have details on what exactly happened here this morning. Yeah, taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 79 degrees, 8 a.m. the last day in July. What is the rest of the day? What does the first week of August look like? We're going to check in with Justin Horn in just a few moments for now. Good morning. Good morning. It's July 31st, the last day of July. And I'm kind of saying good riddance because mm -hmm. I'm just ready for fall. Ready? <laughs> I'm just living in a different false reality. Like, oh, we're not having triple digit heat every day. We haven't had the three hottest months ever. So first off, mm -hmm. to anyone who watched this yesterday, your air conditioner broke, right? Yes. And thank you for uh, Steve who mm. came out and fixed it. Okay. The real MVP. <laughs> real MVP because Justin Horn, anyone without air conditioning today, that's a problem. Uh, it is. It's, uh, it's, it, July is going to end exactly how it started with triple digit heat. Uh, probably we may get into some record heat next week. So it's, this is not ending anytime soon. I want to show you some of the weather headlines. Hottest July ever. This is going to go in the rock record books as the hottest July following the hottest June and hottest May on record. There is some hope next week. I got to tell you, Friday looks decent for a chance for some showers and maybe a few storms better than it's looked in a while anyway. So there's that. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Kentucky coming up later. More devastating flooding there. They're going to get more rain today. It'd be nice if we could kind of spread the wealth right and get some more rain here across Texas. Not in the cards, not at least today. 73 in Kerrville, 72 Rock Springs, 77 New Braunfels at 78 right now in Gonzales. We're in this uh, upper 70s for now. That won't last long. Now that the sun is up, temperatures will start to rise pretty quickly. And I think by noontime, you're already at 90. Partly cloudy skies, mostly sunny this afternoon. We top out at around 101. It'll feel like 102, 103. Southeasterly winds anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. Much more on that chance of rain coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. New this morning, a parking lot fight escalates into a shooting. One man dead. And this morning, police trying to track down the person responsible. So this deadly shooting happening just before 3 this morning in a parking lot on South Flores. That's near Pleasanton Road. Police on the scene telling us a 35-year-old man got into a fight with someone else. That's when the suspect pulled out a gun and fired. We're told the suspect then took off in a black truck. They sped away from the scene. EMS was called unable to save the victim. He was pronounced dead. Now, officers, along with the police helicopter, they searched the area for the suspect, still searching for them this morning. And also new this morning, police tell us a man drove his vehicle into a home in a neighborhood on the city's northeast side. Jonathan Cotto joins us live from that scene. Now, Jonathan, do we know if anyone was hurt? Sarah, luckily nobody was injured inside, and I have to tell you that is truly a miracle because that hole right here is actually a bedroom. Now, we know this is an all-hands situation here, all hands on deck. We had San Antonio Fire Department arrive, San Antonio Police Department, and now also CPS repairing the transformer that the male driver ran over right as he plowed into this yard and into the front part of this house. Now, police are telling us that the mill driver remained on scene after crashing into this home. They are trying to determine if alcohol was a factor, but of course, investigators are trying to determine everything, all the details that led up to this moment here right now. And again, luckily, the homeowners were not inside of that bedroom when this situation happened. We're going to remain on scene and update you with more information as it becomes available. Reporting live from the city's northeast side, Jonathan Cot, KSAT 12 News. Still an active scene out there. Thank you, Jonathan. Now to a developing story. Comal County investigators say they are waiting for a positive ID from the Travis County Medical Examiner's Office for a discovery that happened on Friday night. Investigators now say they believe the body of 45-year-old Shanna DeMambro was found. DeMambro disappeared almost two weeks ago in Spring Branch, nearly 50 minutes into the search. Human remains were found less than 200 yards from where she lived. The badly decomposed body was on a private property in a retention pond. A small detail visible on the body is leading investigators to believe it is her, a tattoo. Her husband says she had a sunflower tattoo on her back. 
She was face down and she was in a almost like a crawling position. She had no clothing on and we couldn't tell that she had any shoes on. The investigation into her is, disappearance is still ongoing. Investigators have not said if they suspect foul play. Well, workers in the community from faith from across Texas offering the people of Uvalde support through prayer and fellowship. A special service held helping the community on their path towards healing. Lee Waldman was there in Uvalde. Shows us that for some, this journey feels all too familiar. They're in a time in their lives where it feels like there's never going to be any better days and it feels like there's never going to be a new normal. A day for kids to be kids in Uvalde after two months of mourning and sadness. We had about 2,000 people, so it was an absolutely great turnout. We had people all over Texas come. The Stronger Together event was closed to media. Organizer Jordan Boutwell told us on the phone afterwards it was to make sure the families were comfortable. The teen has an intimate knowledge of just how difficult this time can be. That will definitely hands down be the worst day of my life. And I knew at the age of 14, my life will never be the same. Boutwell is a survivor of the 2018 Santa Fe High School shooting where 10 people were killed and 13 others were hurt. She's taken it upon herself to help the kids of Uvalde in any way she can. I think that the main message that I could share being a um, school shooting survivor is that you are stronger than what was sent to destroy you. Boutwell isn't alone in her desire to help. Cheryl Turner is from the Austin area. She and other artists from across the country painted hearts for Uvalde to donate to the city and to families. My heart is that the families will get a heart. And if they're not all here today, I want them to go to a safe place that somebody can get one to them. They were on display at a prayer and concert held at the Fairplex today. People from all over flocking to Uvalde to give any kind of comfort they can. So although I can't change what happened to these four innocent kids, I can be there to support them. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. And all the donations from the Stronger Together event will go towards Uvalde Together We Rise Fund. Currently, that fund is at $14 million. Well, Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf was originally appointed in 2001. He's actually been elected five times. He is only the second person in more than a century to serve as both mayor of San Antonio and Bear County Judge. So as we are now in his last term, there's still a lot of change that's going to have a big impact on the future of our community. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf. Good morning, Judge. Thank you always for making time for us. How are you doing? Yeah, glad to be here. So, Judge, just this week, you know, we talked about the three-year anniversary of the Site and Release Program. You talked about how it's saving taxpayers millions of dollars, but people have expressed frustration. They say that they see an increase in crime. Do you see a correlation between the two things? No, not between those two things, but I do see an increase in crime. Uh, but let me first of all state that uh, it's up to the police officer whether to take this nonviolent offense and give a ticket. They still have to show up. They don't show up uh, at our, our at our reentry re center and see if they're available for a program. Uh, they can still end up uh, uh, in jail or, or in trouble. So about 65 percent of that is for marijuana. Uh, so no, th there's no correlation between crime and that program. Second, uh, what's driving the crime, in my estimation, is the fact that there's guns everywhere. The legislature and the governor uh, took away license, made it easy for anybody to get guns today. And so what has happened, it's got into the hands of people that shouldn't have had them. Over 35,000 guns have been taken away in the last five years because of the easiness of someone getting it without the requirement for a license, without the requirement for a background check. Uh, it's, it's just terrible what they've done. And then they, on top of that, they promoted the use of the AR-16, a killing machine meant to kill humans, not to hunt with. And that's exactly what we saw in U Valley. So they've done everything they can to make us more of a gun violent uh, society. Uh, hopefully uh, that will change, and Senator Cornyn at the uh, United States uh, Senate level has certainly taken the first step, and I want to thank him very much uh, for that. The second thing is uh, uh, crimes that are not of a uh, violent nature, but they're thefts and the robberies 
And uh, I can say that I think the best thing to do, you got to form a good partnership with the police department and with the uh, and and with the sheriff's office. Uh, during the time I was mayor, we had all sorts of pro uh, prevention programs, from sell your own patrol to uh, meeting and taking courses with the police department. A combination of the uh, citizens partner with law enforcement. That's the best way to stop robbery in the neighborhood or thefts in the neighborhood. And I would advocate that uh, more and more neighborhood associations need to get together and help protect each other and work with the police and sheriff's department. And Judge, switching gears, we have the Nelson Wolf Municipal Stadium where the missions play, but there's a big question about the missions and their future and whether there will be much needed upgrades to this stadium. So you see those upgrades happening. Well, they, I think the city is prepared to do the upgrades. It's probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of five to $10 million to do it. Uh, but I think there's a sense in the community that we'd like to have a new ballpark. Uh, one, uh, I'd love to see it downtown. Uh, the other proposal is on the north side, close to UTSA, to be able to help their baseball program also. I would hope one of those uh, uh, measures will work at this time, though. Uh, no one has come forward with the land and the proposal to build it. Uh, the city and the county will wait and see what comes up. Uh, as you know, we uh, partnered, the city and the county partnered on the Toyota soccer field. That's been a great success and uh, has worked out well. It's possible that could be done again if the right location came up. So, Judge, big picture. This is your last term, more than 20 years as county judge. What do you want your legacy in our community to be? Well, I, I really focus, I, I think you could say, on maybe three major issues. Uh, one, the environment, uh, what we've done with the mission reach of the river, the largest ecological restoration of the urban river in the United States, what we're doing with San Pedro Creek, uh, how we're funding another a number of other environmental projects, some $240 million worth of improvements to creeks and rivers. Uh, so I, 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 I think that was an important piece of work uh, we did. I think in economic development and preparing our workforce uh, was another thing that I spent a great deal of time on, uh, particularly in bringing Toyota a manufacturing company here and other companies that we brought, and then working to uh, get good job training programs. So I, I felt good about the work we've done there. And then uh, I, I believe that if, uh, if we uh, look forward, and, and continue to do a better job on education, uh, particularly in our school districts. We're partnering with them. We're doing that with Bibliotech. And in fact, we're building one on the school campus right now. And then we've done a lot of work, I think, on our criminal justice system, focusing on trying to save people's lives rather than, rather than make them uh, worse. Uh, so that's where I've spent a great deal of my time. Well, Judge, thank you so much for always making time for us. And for our viewers who are watching at home, you can find this interview in its entirety later this morning on KSAT.com. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Time now, 813, 79 degrees now. Well, still to come on GMSA, calling all blood donors. A community effort is needed to help increase local blood supply. We'll tell you about two upcoming chances for you to help out. And taking a quick live look out there, 814, 79 degrees out. How hot will it get? When will we see rain? Justin Horn is in and he has the latest. Good morning, welcome back. And hey, happy last day of July. Woo! We're getting through it. Come so, on, maybe just a month and a half <laughs> more of this crazy heat. Justin Horn, another record setting month here in San Antonio. Yes, uh, July is going to go in the record books, hottest July on record, and uh, that follows, as we said earlier, May and June, which were also record-setting months. We're not quite there with the drought. I mean, we're, we're getting close. Uh, we certainly have set records when it comes to lack of rainfall so far this year, but I want to compare 
2011 to where we are now. You remember back in 2011, that's when things really got dry. But it wasn't until 2014, 2015, and that was kind of a continuation of that 2011 drought, that things really got bad at some of our area lakes. So right now, Medina is 11% full. It's down 70 feet. King in 90% full, down 5 feet. But back in 2014, 2015, right at the end of that drought, it got as low as 3% at Medina. It was down 92 feet and Canyon got as low as 75%. It was down 12 feet. So just to give you a comparison, it's not as bad as it was back then. We're headed in that direction. We very well may get there, but we're not as bad yet. Let's hope this drought doesn't go two or three years. Uh, but the, the way it's looking right now, it's certainly not great. We had one day this month where we had measurable rainfall and that was a hundredth of an inch. So basically, the entire month was dry. We were well below average. And we know where we stand for the year. We're about 13 inches below average. As far as temperatures go, we averaged 89.8. That is 5.1 degrees above average. We had a, a high temperature of 107. This is also record setting as far as temperatures go. August is gonna start off the same way. 50 days now where we've had 100 degrees or more. We're closing in on those records at 57 and 59. We should get there. I don't see how we don't uh, with the way the forecast is looking next week. As so we go outside for you right now, mostly cloudy skies. 79 degrees, dew point is at 73. Southerly winds at about nine. Feels like 82 and temperatures are in the mid 70s around Kerrville, one of the cooler spots, 73 Uvalde and Rock Springs. But upper 70s for most of the San Antonio area. We'll see these numbers start to jump up here pretty quickly and dew points, well, they're in the mid 70s. Like the last few days, these will drop off a little bit in the afternoon, but not enough to get rid of uh, the heat index. We'll still get a heat index close to 102, 103 this afternoon. So it's still gonna be very similar, uh, really, to the last several days. Here is the water vapor, and we look at the water vapor to get an idea of kind of the spins in the atmosphere, what disturbances are headed our way, and we see one here in the Gulf of Mexico. Right there, a little spin. This is gonna be moving in tomorrow. That gives us a small chance for rain. It's that situation where we get a few showers along the coast, and some of those work a little bit further inland, 10%. It's all we can do here, 10% chance of rain, it's low, and then high pressure builds in by midweek. Wednesday is gonna be one of our hottest days, but by the time we get to the end of the week, Another little disturbance develops and moves east to west, and this brings rain chances up some 20% on Friday. That's kind of our next best hope, if you will. It's not great. It's not a huge chance, but better than what we've been seeing. So again, 101 today, southeasterly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. We'll go mostly sunny. And the extended forecast, 100 tomorrow, 10% chance of rain with that little disturbance working on. And then 102 Wednesday, 103, 102 Tuesday, I should say, 103 Wednesday. And that would tie a record. The record is 103 for Wednesday, 102 Thursday. And then we'll bring temperatures down just a little bit with that hope for some showers and storms Friday. Right now, 20% chance. I would love to up those rain chances as we get closer. We'll see. But right now, it's, uh, it's low end, and we're still dealing with some big-time heat, guys. Got my water bill. Oh, it was high. Better than the electricity bill. Still, but <laughs> higher than normal. Time now, 821, 79 degrees out. All right, straight ahead. What you need to know about two blood drives ha happening this week, just in time for return to class. Good morning and welcome back. It's a story we talk about a lot. There is a huge need for blood donations, especially type O blood. And officials with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center also say platelet donations are needed. So happening tomorrow and Tuesday, the center is hosting a back to school blood drive at Wonderland of America's Mall. That's on Fredericksburg Road on the city's northwest side. The blood drive will be held both days from 11 a.m. until 6 in the evening. So those who donate will receive, get this, a free medium pizza from Papa John's, donor points that can actually be turned in for a $10 gift card or a t-shirt, and their names will be placed in a drawing to win a Nintendo Switch. You can make an appointment to donate going to SouthTexasBlood.org. And yes, these objects are fantastic, but you're also helping so many people out. Both of us have donated blood. Yes. It is so easy. It's, it is so It's almost so relaxing. Fast. They make it very convenient mm -hmm. for you. They make it very comfortable for you. They give you a blanket. You just got to lay down for, you know, however long it takes. I didn't get a blanket, but you should do it because you can I'll save always lives. Always ask for the blanket. Time now, 826, 79 degrees out. Well, still ahead, have you ever wanted to eat Blanche Dorothy Sophia or Rosa's cooking? Now you can. A new restaurant featuring food from the Golden Girls TV show has just opened. We'll tell you where in just a bit. Right at the top of the next half hour, right after the break, we have the latest on those devastating floods in Kentucky. And we have the latest on the rescue efforts. We'll be right back. 
Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, July 31st. We're officially going to be done with July. I'm happy about that because I'm so over this mm -hmm. heat. Um, so what are you just looking for? It's like November because I got to tell you, September and October is still hot. I know. <laughs> like, come on. South Texas, it's like relentless. Justin's just giving us a look. Like, you guys have no idea what you're in for. I mean, October, I do think we get some decent fronts in October. September, yeah, but we're in La Nina and it's dry and hot. It's true. It's true. <laughs> and I, I wish I had better news, but yes, we are. You, you point out that we're in La Nina. You're exactly right. And it's it likely will be a drier than average fall. But at least we still do get some fronts in the fall and hopefully more rain than we've got this summer. Uh, as we look across the country, there is uh, rain across parts of Oklahoma this morning. More rain across Kentucky, places where they do not need the rain. And a few showers out west, but certainly nothing here across Texas. Still very quiet. High temperatures today up around 101 here in San Antonio, 102 in Dallas. There will be some big time heat up across the Pacific Northwest too. 102 in Boise, 98 Portland today. So we're not the only ones baking. Uh, you can see the the uh, Big time temperatures there, 89 in Seattle, but Texas is going to be generally in the 90s or triple digits this afternoon. KSAT 12 hour forecast. If you're heading out the door this morning to go to church, it's warm, it's humid, 85 degrees by 10 o'clock, 88 by 11. We're in the 90s by lunchtime, 99 by 3 o'clock, and then around 101 this afternoon. It will feel like 102, 103 with our humidity. What about that Sahara dust? We still have a little bit of it around. We'll take a look at the forecast. When does it come back? There is. Uh, looks like there's more in the forecast by the end of the week. We'll have more on that in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. New this morning, police say a man drives his vehicle into a house in a neighborhood on the city's northeast side, causing a lot of damage, including knocking out the power. It's really a crazy situation. Jonathan Cotto joining us live from the scene. So, Jonathan, is the power even close to being restored yet? You know what, that's an excellent question, but I can tell you CPS has been here all morning and what a nightmare of a situation for this family. I cannot imagine the fright they felt when that vehicle went straight into their home. And let me mention that that is a bedroom and luckily no injuries were reported. Luckily, nobody was inside of that room when the vehicle came crashing in. Well, let's take a look at what that scene looked like earlier this morning. We know San Antonio Police Department arrived to this home on the 7,000 block of Mid Crown Drive. This is near Eisenhower Road, not too far from I-35. They say a male driver at a high speed crashed into this home. They're letting us know that that male driver uh, was arrested here on scene. But let me talk to you a little bit more about what took place here. He drove in from here in the front yard and managed to run over that transformer. CPS right now installing a brand new transformer for the family here. But that original box did catch on fire. There's a huge burn mark here on their front lawn. But of course, this case remains under investigation. Max, are, we're going to stay on scene and uh, hopefully get some more information. And as it's made available, we'll bring you those updates. Reporting live from the city's northeast side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Reporting live from Windcrest. Also new this morning, a home and shed filled with flames on the city's west side. So take a look. This is the 3700 block of Beach Street that's near Southwest 36. This was just before 11 last night. Firefighters on the scene telling us the fire started in the shed, spread to the home. It took crews 45 minutes to get those flames under control. But as of this morning, both structures destroyed. Luckily, though, no one home at the time of the flames. Arson investigators still working to figure out how exactly this started. But at last check, no injuries. Well, fire crews were able to keep flames from spreading after another shed fire broke out. This one happening on the west side last night. It happened in the 200 block of Estrella Street. Not far from old Highway 90, firefighters say they aren't sure what caused the fire, but the shed is considered a total loss. Flames were able to reach the main part of the house, scorching the home's exterior siding, but firefighters were able to put out that fire before it reached the inside of the home. They say the homeowner was not injured. Fire damage to the shed and its contents is estimated around $20,000. One man in custody this morning after San Antonio police tell us they were able to track down the suspect who's accused of robbing someone while they were in the bathroom. So according to the arrest affidavit, 19 year old Dwayne Holmes bum rushed the victim along with three other suspects. Holmes accused of putting the victim in a choke lock, a choke hold from behind, then holding him down on the ground. That's when 
Other suspects allegedly stole the man's watch, money, and car keys, then took off in the victim's vehicle. Now, that victim and a witness at the scene able to give police a description of Holmes and included his red dreadlocks. Holmes arrested, now facing charges of robbery. Now to a new threat of flash flooding in Kentucky as the state is still trying to recover from those historic floods. The death toll now sitting at 25 people. That could get even higher amid this desperate search and rescue mission. ABC's Mola Lenghi in Kentucky with the latest. This morning, battered Kentucky communities preparing for more rain, hoping it doesn't lead to more flooding. This is still an emergency situation. We are in search and, and rescue mode. While first responders conducted more than 1,400 rescues, still many are missing. Authorities desperately searching for survivors, still struggling to reach remote hard hit areas and so much ground to cover. You've got some kind of natural disaster. It's, it's usually in a geographically defined area. Well, the geographically defined area here is everywhere. Benny Bailey is coordinating search and rescue missions from the Knott County Crisis Management Center. He says what concerns him is the unknown. As the death toll continues to climb, we're learning of the 25 dead, four were children. Uh, I'm worried that we're going to be we're going to be finding bodies for weeks to come. The state opening up 15 emergency shelters for those who have lost everything. Harvey Thomas is usually the one helping folks in an emergency. Now, after losing his home to the floods, this EMT needs help. I know where, even where to start, what to do, where to go. With the potential for more rain in the forecast, officials are trying to prevent more damage like this. They've requested resources, received resources from neighboring counties. They've evacuated people out of flood zones, put them in temporary shelters, hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst. Mola Lange, ABC News, Cary, Kentucky. Another morning headlines. Police in Wisconsin are investigating after a bizarre stabbing incident left one person dead and four others seriously injured. It happened yesterday as people were tubing on the Apple River. That's near Minnesota, Wisconsin border. A 52 year old man allegedly attacked a group with a knife, killing a 17 year old boy. Four others, one woman and three men, all in their early 20s, were taken to the hospital with stab wounds. The suspect tried to escape, but police were able to track it him down and take him into custody. Authorities are trying to determine what led up to the stabbing. The New York City Department of Health declaring a public health emergency all in the aftermath of what they're calling a monkeypox outbreak. So at the epicenter of the outbreak in New York City, city health officials estimate that 150,000 New Yorkers could be at risk for monkeypox exposure. New York becomes the second major United States city to declare a public health emergency. Remember, San Francisco did it just this week. In support of the city's declaration, New York's governor also declaring a state disaster emergency on Friday over monkeypox to strengthen ongoing efforts to confront the outbreak. Important to mention, New York accounts for more than one in four United States monkeypox cases, showing a disproportional impact on the LGBTQ plus community. Well, mandatory evacuation orders have been issued for hundreds of homes being threatened by the McKinney Fire on the California-Oregon border. The National Forest Service estimates the McKinney Fire has scorched between 30 and 40,000 acres in less than 24 hours. The inferno is spreading rapidly and is being fueled by the relentless heat and extreme drought conditions. Several homes near a river in that area have been destroyed. A giant plume of smoke formed above the ridgeline, producing dangerous lightning. Firefighters say they are seeing fire levels they normally don't see until late August. Time now, 839, 80 degrees out. Coming up, if you want to thank Aww. someone for being a friend. You got to sing it. Um, mm -hmm. Not very good. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> you can take them to lunch at the new Golden Girls Kitchen. We'll tell you where it is and what's on the menu. And as we close out July, giving you a preview of what you can expect on the big screen just next month. It's already hot. 80 degrees at 8.39 this morning. If you have to walk your dogs, run errands, do mow the lawn, whatever, do it now. Do it early. It's going to be another triple-digit day. Justin will have our Sunday forecast when we come back. KSAT 12 celebrates Military City USA, powered by USAA. San Antonio is the heart of military training for every new recruit joining the United States Air Force. And here at Lackland, there's also special training for military police. Here's a look at the largest career field in the Air Force, security forces. Drop the weapon, sir! Listen to sir, me! Put your weapon down! 
With the foundational information, they get a four hour long lecture on the objective standard reasonableness of the Fourth Amendment. From there, we get them into the Milo systems where they get to structurally place themselves in scenarios to where they can build their skills, their, their communication skills with dealing with subjects or suspects, and then applying the elements as they've been learned. The course incorporates different phases of training to teach airmen how to defend and protect everyone and everything inside the Air Force. From here, when they're out here, we give them a little bit of stress inoculation to kind of get their heart rate going, their adrenaline pumping. Sir, I'm from Security Force, I'm Airman Gosling. They kind of simulate it to what they're going to experience in a real life scenario. And we get them in the houses with those real time reflexive responses so they can react accordingly. Sunday, Joe Manchin changes course. Now is the big climate bill back on the table? What about inflation? Plus, the prison swap with Russia. How will they respond? And Jonathan Carl with a key witness at the center of the January 6th investigation. Sunday on ABC's This Week. Well, summer may be winding down. Really? Not really. I think we have about two more months. But Hollywood has new films headed to theaters in August. From a wild train ride to a high-stakes crime drama, Break Damage L breaks down what you can expect tomorrow. Hi, there's a gun on Shh, run. It's the quiet car. Gotta use your small inside voice in here, son. There's a gun. Brad Pitt rides the bullet train. The action comedy features Pitt going up against a group of fellow underworld types, chasing a mysterious briefcase on a high-speed train bound from Tokyo. The train leaves the station August 5th. Who wants to play bodies, bodies, bodies? Yeah! So how do you play? An innocent game turns deadly in Bodies, Bodies, Bodies after a group of young people caught in a hurricane during a house party stumble into a real murder. The thriller hits theaters August 12th. These three minutes of life were taken out of the flow of time. Helena Bonham Carter narrates three minutes a lengthening. The documentary looks at the only film footage of a small Jewish community in 1938 Poland prior to the Holocaust. The film opens in theaters August 19th. Leave right now. The guy in the gray hoodie is robbing the bank. Who's in charge here? John Boyega stars in Breaking, based on the true story of Marine veteran Brian Brown Easley and his actions following a denial of Veterans Affairs support. The drama arrives in theaters August 26th. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. All right. This weekend, a California restaurant began serving up the best of the Golden Girls. All right, so the Golden Girls Kitchen officially opened for business in Beverly Hills yesterday. Organizers say the pop-up restaurant was fully immersive, plenty of opportunities for photo ops, including the iconic kitchen table from the TV series. On the menu, we have Sophia's lasagna, a Miami-style Cuban sandwich. It sounds delicious. And, of course, dessert from Rose's native St. Olaf. Plus, a lot of cheesecake. Love cheesecake. Oh, I love cheesecake. Reservations are required, and each ticket includes an entree and dessert with the option to pur purchase additional sides and merchandise. Tickets start at $39 per person during non-peak hours. And get this, the opening of the pop-up restaurant held yesterday purposefully, Saturday, yesterday, was actually National Golden Girls Day. Happy belated National Golden Girls Day. Very cool. I, would you eat here? It depends on the prices. <laughs> Of course, says our own financier. I wonder if they had to get permission, though, to, to use the names and the likenesses It's and in all that. Beverly mm. Hills, so I'm sure there's some connection there. If they're using the actual kitchen, yeah. someone who owns it has the connection. I'm sure they signed off. What do you got behind you, Justin? Uh, it's beautiful uh, sunset last Ooh. night. Taylor sent this in. He adds that it also has some of that Saharan dust in it. Probably does. You see some of the colors there. Beautiful. Uh, it is a beautiful shot. We've had that dust around the last couple of days. It hasn't been terribly thick. I doubt it's causing anyone really uh, any big problems, but it is there. Uh, very light concentration goes away after today. And most of this week is pretty quiet until we get towards uh, Friday. And then some of this dust tries to work back in. Again, not huge concentrations. This is going to be generally pretty light, but I do want to warn you. We could have a little more dust in the atmosphere Thursday into Friday. Like yesterday and today, it's not going to be that thick. Uh, so if you have an allergy to or that sort of thing, I don't think it's really going to bug you that much. So we'll go outside for you. We've got mostly cloudy skies. 79 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 73, so it's pretty humid. Southerly winds at 9. Feels like 82 at this hour.
81 Gonzalez, 80 New Braunfels, 76 Kerrville, 78 Hondo. Temperatures in San Antonio did drop into the uh, mid 70s for a time, but we're already starting to see things warm up. 78 Holotus, 80 down there at Stenson. Dew point trend today. It's pretty humid this morning. You'll see that dew point drop off into the 60s this afternoon. And this has been kind of like clockwork. We've seen this uh, this number drop to about 60 each and every afternoon. But that's still just enough to create heat indices anywhere from 101 to 103 this afternoon. And here in San Antonio, I think we got up to about 101. Mostly uh, everyone's in the triple digits. I would say the hill country probably upper 90s. So this is this is just kind of a repeat, right, of what we were dealing with yesterday. There is some rain up across parts of Oklahoma, some much needed rain there. Those showers are working east and most of Texas remains fairly dry. As we zoom out some, you'll notice there's more rain moving through Kentucky. Not what they need there. They've had so much rain. Flash flood watch is in effect. There's going to be more flooding here today. And here's what's concerning. The Weather Prediction Center actually has them within a moderate risk for excessive rainfall today, meaning they could get more heavy rain on top of the flooding they're already dealing with. So not a good situation, and it uh, looks like they'll get at least uh, more rain today, hopefully ending tomorrow. Our current setup shows high pressure is just out to our north and west. There is a disturbance, though, down in the Gulf of Mexico. This is pretty far south, but it works into South Texas by tomorrow, and that flow, that onshore flow gives us about a 10% chance. I think we'll see a few showers on the coast. A few of those will make a run for San Antonio late in the day. Don't get your hopes up though. This is one of those situations where it's like one or two showers on the radar and that's it. High pressure builds back in by midweek. Our hottest day probably Wednesday. We could be challenging some records. And then as the high scoots a little bit further north, opens the door for another little disturbance to roll in Friday. This I think has a little better opportunity to give us some showers and storms, 20% chance because it moves almost over top of us. We'll see. I'm encouraged at least a little bit. I still don't think this is going to be a drop buster, but uh, at least there is something in the forecast. 99 degrees, 3 o'clock today, 101 by 5 p.m., 95 by 8 p.m. South usually winds anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow's there's that 10% chance of rain, 100 on your Monday. 102 Tuesday, 103 Wednesday, 102 Friday. And if you do the math, you're at 50, 100 degree days. Uh, today would be 51, 52 Monday, 53 Tuesday, 54 Wednesday. We'd be at 55 by Thursday if everything plays out the way it should. And so we'd be right on the cusp of setting some records for most 100 degree days. We're going to do this pretty early in August, it looks like, guys. So it looks like we're setting a new record by August. It's inevitable, I think, at this point, because keep in mind our hottest temperature we've ever seen here in San Antonio occurred in September. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just fast forward to November then? Thank you, Justin yeah. Horv. Time now, 851, 80 degrees out. All right, tomorrow on GMSA, giving prisoners purpose and using education to turn their lives around, transforming those lives behind bars. That story will be tomorrow on GMSA. Welcome back. Uh, we're looking at 101 today, 100 on Monday, with just a small chance for a shower or two. It is going to be hot this week, as high as 103 on Wednesday could be near records and then maybe a chance of rain by Friday, 20% chance. But hey, we're, we're gonna stay positive here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're, we're getting into August. Once we get into September, hopefully we'll start getting some fronts. I know that we, we joke about it a lot, but this can be very dangerous. Heat. It is so important to be smart and be healthy. The hospital said that they are seeing more and more heat related illnesses as days go by. And as these triple digit stays, as they continue, you got to be safe, got to be smart. All right, let's uh, end on some happy, positive news. We want to give a shout out to our very own Jesse De Goyado. Happy birthday, Jesse. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. One of our producer says Jesse's been working at KSAT since, since 1984. Legend. She is a legend. Thank you for teaching us and doing your work.